Yo, what up guys and welcome back to another one. As you can tell, oh yeah, we're back out at the little range to do what might be the last video for our good buddy old 12 gauge, the old TriStar 12 gauge right here. Yeah, it might be its last go. I know I said that the last two videos and you know what, the first video really did a number on it. We fixed her up. The last video wasn't bad with the three and a half inch shell in the chamber. But today, I'm doing the most requested video out of this series of shotgun safety videos that I've been doing. This is by far the most requested. Now, I have some other good ones in mind. So, so what I need from y'all right now is this is probably going to end uh, the old TriStar's life today. I'm sorry. But what I need is y'all to hit that like button. Last time I told y'all if you could get the video to 2,000 likes, well, this one would be coming. And the way it looks right now, it's at 1,967 thumbs ups. Now, I'm just going to call that good and say that's a clean 2,000. So we're just going to come out and probably wreck the old girl today. I'm sorry again. I know. I'm probably going to say sorry a few times before before this happens. This is not the end of the shotgun safety videos, y'all. I'm telling you. So y'all really need to stay tuned. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe because a lot of gun safety videos that are entertaining, just like this one, are coming all throughout the summer. Basically, what I like doing is um, taking theories or things that we've all just wondered about happening, safety-wise. Just like uh, the first video was mud in the barrel. Okay, let's go try it. It blew the end of the barrel up. It's way easier to remember something if you see it rather than someone just telling you, hey, don't do that. Get what I'm saying? I'm sure you do. Before we get started, I do have to give a big shout out to Ducks Waterfowl Co. This video is actually sponsored by Ducks, so big shout out to Ducks. If you want to check out the hoodies, the hats, our Ducks sweats, oh yeah, they're joggers and they are comfy. I will link all this down below. Go check it out. But what I think we ought to do first of all is a lot of people have requested me to just shoot the gun. They're like, hey, shoot the gun before you uh, blow it up next time. So I think that's a good idea. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna give her old pepperoni real quick. So first off, like I said, let's fire the old TriStar 12 gauge. I'm gonna use a very, very light load for it just because uh, I don't trust it all that much for what we've done to it. Again, guys, I repeat safety. Don't fire a firearm if you've done, uh, you know, iffy stuff with it like me. I've done some iffy things with this gun. Uh, nothing that has structurally manipulated the chamber or anything. But if there was something wrong with the chamber or the base of the barrel, I probably wouldn't hold this gun and shoot it, but I do trust it. So, let's just give her a little try, shall we? Good to go. Now, there's no way that I was going to put one of my heavy loads through that bad boy. This is one of my favorite loads that I've been shooting all waterfowl season. This is the Federal uh, ounce and an eighth and also this right here is one of my favorite loads as well. This is the Federal ounce and a quarter and uh, this is their snow goose load. So this is blue box, this is snow goose load. So that's what we're going to use in the 12 gauge. Now I said most requested video y'all. This is the most requested video out of these shotgun safety videos, right? So what was it? What's the video, Bob? <sighs> this is the video, y'all. 20 gauge in front of a 12 gauge. Now, I'm sure y'all, a lot of you, uh, including myself, at first when this was recommended, I'm like, wait, how could that happen, first of all? But it's actually probably not that uncommon to happen. I mean, yeah, it's not as common as the mud in the barrel theory, but if you think about it, if you're hunting pheasants, you have to wear your vest, your orange vest. Those got pockets in them. We usually put ammo in those pockets, right? What if you leave ammo in there and you're running and gunning? I mean, just dropping pheasants left and right. You, you uh, reach in there, you load one and you load another. You know, things happen when we're hunting sometimes. Uh, we can really be in the moment. So I guess I'm also telling you guys, never just get too caught up in the excitement of the hunt. Look what you're putting in your gun. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to put the 20 gauge in first into the chamber and then we're going to slide the 12 gauge in behind it. Now, what's going to happen? You guys got to drop a, a comment right now, just like the last videos. You got to tell me what you think is going to happen. 
What I think is going to happen, I think that... I really think it's going to be like uh, the mud in the end of the barrel, except the mud is going to be at the base of the barrel, which is the 20 gauge. I'm pretty sure the base of the barrel, if not the chamber, is probably going to go boom and do a little separation. So again, is, this just, is it just going to you know, fire this off and both shells are going to fire off and not much is going to happen? I don't think so. But again, leave your comment down below. If you've done this, obviously you know what's going to happen. Well, it was probably a dumb idea for me to hold that gun and shoot it because uh, I, I don't think it was that unsafe to hold it. But I just uh, went to put the 20 gauge in there and it actually didn't eject that little load out that we shot. So what we're going to do, I, and, and I don't know why it didn't eject it. it should have ejected it. It didn't eject the three and a half inch shell on the last video, of course, because it, it was too long once it was fired to uh, escape the chamber. But why didn't it eject that one? I have no idea. What we're gonna do here, we're gonna go ahead and load this bad boy. I'm gonna be extra careful. Let's slide that in there. That's the 20 gauge, okay? And we're gonna use my favorite shell right behind it, the uh, blue box ounce and an eighth, right there. When I close the chamber, I'm gonna be extra careful. I don't wanna slam it or do anything crazy. I'm gonna put the camera down real fast. I'm going to delicately close the chamber. I'm going to get the gun mounted in the vise. I'm going to get twine hooked up to the trigger because, you know, I am very safe about this stuff. Oh, but check it out. We got the twine hooked to the trigger. We got her loaded, and I tightened down the vise extra, extra tight. Let's go ahead. You know the drill. This is the exciting part. What's going to happen? Now you know, I'm always super, super safe about doing this. So I always get behind the truck, <laughs> as safe as I can get. Actually today, I put the gun another probably 15, 20 yards away from the truck. All right, here we go. Here we go. I don't think I took it off safety. Darn it. Nope, sure didn't. There we go. That would have been bad. I would have been sitting there yanking that trigger, nothing happening. Here we go. In three, two, one. Oh man, that sounded really muffled, just like the barrel. Oh wow! What the? Here we are. Kind of scared to go close. Wow! I really thought that it was gonna completely blow this to smithereens. What the heck? That's wild. I never expected uh, that to happen. I honestly figured, what I'm doing is I'm walking out here, I'm looking for the 20 gauge shell. I don't see it anywhere. There's the 12 gauge shell right there. Kind of looks weird on the end there. Maybe it looks a little melted. Probably because there's a 20 gauge shell in front of it. I'd have no idea where the 20 gauge shell went. I have no idea what happened to the 20 gauge shell. It's completely gone. Well, it ejected the 12 gauge shell, but I cannot find the 20 gauge shell literally anywhere. So you know what that means. There's only one thing to do. I was expecting for the whole chamber to blow up and I'm sure a lot of you thought the same thing. The only thing to do is to do it again. All right, we got her all loaded up again. Let's go check her out. I have the, I have the chamber shut. It's ready to go. Here she is, take her off the of safety. The GoPro is going, but I switched up a little bit. This is what I did this time. Instead of the ounce and an eighth federal load, I put in the Snow Goose ounce and a quarter. So, a little heavier load. I'm telling you, I really banked on today to be the TriStar's last day. And it's not like I'm trying to make that happen, but I just really wanna see what happens when we try all angles of this thing, because like I said, this was the most requested video out of all the shotgun safety videos. The most requested. Every one of you guys were like, Bobby, it's gonna completely demolish the entire chamber of that gun. And I'm like, cool, cool. So here we go, three, so be wait a minute. Before we get started here, you guys gotta hit that thumbs up button if you enjoy these videos, please. Let's get this video to 2,000 likes faster than the last one. Come on, team. And you know if you haven't hit that notification button, you need to. Three, two, one. 
Sounded about the same. Sounded about the same. Hmm, what do we got? What do we got? Same thing. Guys, it's not doing anything to this gun. I'm telling you right now. I don't understand. I really don't understand. A lot of you said that, uh, Bobby, if you put a 20 gauge shotgun shell in front of it, some crazy stuff happens and guys, I don't know what to tell you. I've been trying here. What I'm thinking is happening is that 20 gauge shell is A, either firing and just getting blown out by the, uh, by the 12 gauge shell or it's not firing before it can fire the 12 gauge shell is just completely ripping it to shreds before it's even able to get out of the barrel because there's nothing left of the 20 gauge shell i can't find any remnants anywhere nothing all right i came up with an idea this is going to be the last try because guys honestly i don't see any remnants of the 20 gauge shell anyways it must just be getting obliterated coming out of that barrel i mean there's no shrapnel there's no little yellow pieces laying around i mean there's literally nothing i mean nothing left of it so i don't know if it's just getting blasted out of the barrel i don't know Whatever you guys think's happening here, please drop a comment down below because I have no idea. I'm not gonna know anything until I look at that GoPro, and even at that, who knows what it's gonna show. So again, drop your comment down below. What the heck's going on here? Have you guys ever done this before? But like I said, let's put her on safety. There we go. Like I said, this is gonna be the last go, guys. I uh, checked the barrel, it is completely clear. So we're gonna put in one, two 20 gauge shells gotta be really really careful oh man that won't even two shells that won't go in all the way huh i'll be darned well two 20 gauge shells will not fit due to the barrel constricting down and they both won't fit it's too long having three shells in your barrel it just it chokes down too quickly but desperate times call for desperate measures <laughs> oh yeah i'm gonna put a 410 shell in front of the 20 gauge shell and then a 12 gauge shell now could this happen hypothetically speaking anything could happen right i mean who knows i mean the world's crazy crazy stuff like this happens every day so these are steel uh steel load 410 shells so let's uh put in that bad boy like that let's put in one of these like so and then let's see if this bad boy will fit now oh <laughs> slid right in okay here we go i'm going to safely close the chamber on this shotgun get the gopro rolling and we're gonna give it a boom well, before we get started on this third and final deal here, uh, I have to say that these Tri-Stars are extra tough guns. I must say so myself. I'm trying, y'all. We're gonna see here. This is full send. I mean, this is, this is third and final go right here. So again, you gotta hit that thumbs up button. I'm excited. I'm a little scared, but I'm excited. Okay, so here we go. And uh, three, two, one. Mm, little different sound a little higher pitch sounded like that 410 went off what do we have yet again nothing entirely crazy guys 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 i was so excited for this video because i knew from all you guys and all the comments all of you guys are like hey we've had it happen on accident i've seen it done the chamber is not going to hold up and look at that still no remnants of the 410 shell i've been looking here for a minute before i flip the camera back on i am literally just in awe i'm like what the heck what is it doing i know we got we got to go back and look at the gopro footage here but what is it doing why isn't it just completely wadding everything up Well, I'm checking out the 12 gauge, the uh, old TriStar here, and let me tell you what, I never in a million years thought that this gun 
was going to be that tough. I mean, I'm looking at the barrel, the base of the barrel here, and there is no swelling at all. The only thing that I can find is uh, in the chamber here, right up against the pin on the face of the bolt. There, I don't know if you guys can see it very well, but there are some burn marks. Basically, everything got scorched. You can tell there's a lot of burn marks going on in there, but other than that, the old TriStar, I mean, I gotta put you down and I gotta give you a good old clap. If you guys don't know, this is like a $300 gun. Awesome job. But like I said, guys, we're gonna go back home. I'm gonna look at that GoPro footage and I guess that might tell us something, but in the end, what happened here was the 12 gauge was going off. I believe everything was probably going off inside of that, uh, inside of the barrel and the chamber portion there. But I think the 20 gauge and the 410 just got ejected right out the tip of the barrel because every time it ejected the 12 gauge pretty good. And you remember back on the first shot when I took the test fire shot with the light load with one of these, remember it didn't eject it. What I'm thinking is this is just a light load and that chamber's pretty gummed up obviously. But it wouldn't eject this shell but it ejected the bigger 3 inch shells probably because that 20 gauge and then the 410 was going off and blasting <laughs> helping the 12 gauge shell get out of the chamber because normally it doesn't want to eject them at all so pretty interesting i do have to say so myself pretty interesting if you guys have any input again please drop it down below in the comment section i would greatly appreciate it um again these videos guys i try to do them as safe as possible I mean, this would be absolutely idiotic if I was to hold the gun or anything. So, before you guys put all those negative comments like, geez, Bobby, oh my goodness, just appreciate the video and understand that I am trying to do it safe because this is a safety video after all. Like I said, I wanted to do more safety videos. We all have to be safety conscious with these guns out in the field, guys. Got a lot of people around us at all times, especially if you're duck hunting, pheasant hunting, goose hunting. Very rarely do I goose or duck hunt or pheasant hunt by myself. So it's all about safety, keeping ourselves safe, but more importantly, keeping our buddies, our dads, our brothers, our sisters, whoever's hunting with us, safe beside us all the time. Not only hunting when we're at the range or anything. So, oh, but like always, that's going to be it, guys. If you haven't subscribed, you need to do so. We got a lot of these gun safety videos coming. And I try to make them as entertaining as possible for y'all. So again, if you enjoyed this video, give your boy a big old thumbs up. And if you want to support the channel, I know there's not a lot of ways for y'all to support us YouTubers out here. But the one way that you can is go over to duckswaterfowl.com. Hoodie, sweats, t-shirts that I got on underneath this, hats, whatever. When you guys purchase something, it goes directly to supporting me and bringing you guys more videos. So thank you all. We will see you on the next one. Whatever videos you guys want to see next, anything like this, drop it down in the comment section below. I will be sure to read every single comment and reply to all of the positive ones. I love the positive comments, y'all. Thank you for those. But we will see you on the next one. Peace.